Hello everybody, this is Ducey, and today we are looking at some Encounter Plus updates. It has been a while, it feels good to be back. There's a ton of updates, so I'm just going to knock them out in the order that they happen. So right now we are looking at version 4.11.2 to see some new updates that uh, have been brought there since I last posted. So the first thing I want to talk about is that we now have support for a bunch of image formats that we did not have before, including uh, animated image formats, GIF, animated PNG, stuff like that. So in order to use these formats, the animated ones, you do have to make an asset. So I'm coming into the spells asset pack that I've got, making a new asset. Then here it's asking, where the image is, I'm gonna browse, and we're just gonna whoop, we're just gonna drag this right into here and save this guy. Now you'll notice right now it does not seem to be showing us anything animated, and that is because I missed a step. Right here where it says type image, this is the key. You gotta tell it that it's an animated image. And now we should be ready to roll. So if I drop this off in here, cool. We've got the animation right there, ready to roll. So the next thing I wanna show you is the simplify walls option that we've got here. So we've got some walls in here. And now if I select one of these and right click, I can simplify. And you'll notice it removed some points that it analyzed and thought were unneeded. So this is super handy if you've got an older device and it's running kind of slow, or if you've just drawn something and it ended up being way more complex than you wanted, you're having a hard time editing it, you can just tap and hold or right click and simplify. You'll notice that it did it only with the uh, dots here, the line that is selected, so ones that are not selected are not affected by that, so you have to select each one that you may want to simplify. Cool, that should really help those of you with some older stuff. Another small but handy update is the ability to go into your uh, messages and roles here, and now you can tap and hold or right click and just delete single messages instead of having to clear the entire log. Now, something else that's nice here is you'll notice I've got a few goblins in combat up here and uh, some players, but I've got, these goblins are in combat, but these goblins down here are not in combat. So when I roll initiative, there we go. It's rolled initiative for everybody. These ones down here that are not in combat are not, well, a part of that. So if we switch back to the token layer here, take all of them and bring them into combat, now, because we're in the middle of combat, it will automatically roll initiative for them if we've chosen in settings for it to roll initiative. And they are now brought in and ready to go. There's also a note here that uh, I'm not gonna be able to easily show you, but background music and animated maps should continue making their sound when you roll dice and have the roll dice sound on. And as a reminder, under settings, it's way down near the bottom here somewhere is where you can turn that sound effect on and off. And there is also a ton of bug fixes that we won't go through with each one, but lots of improvements here. Awesome. Next up is 4.12. So the first change in 4.12 is that some more animated stuff here, you can now put transparent and animated images into stat blocks with monsters. And the key here is putting it into the artwork field uh, as opposed to the token field for that to show up in the stat block. Also, all of the pathfinding has been updated to account for uh, walls a little bit better you can see that it is uh, leaving a path, telling me the distance here and creating those points. And as it creates those points, you can change what that path is. So if it didn't go the way that you thought it would, or if you know somebody needed to move a certain direction, you can now grab onto those waypoints and change them. It's only gonna show this while you are in battle here. If I am not in battle, I'm just moving around now. In addition to those pathfinding options, we now have a ruler tool here so the DM can very quickly just grab from anywhere and get a quick measurement for how far away something is from something else. Very handy. And you'll notice it leaves it there so you can hold on to it, move it later. And of course we can right click delete to get rid of those. Hey, and a quick interjection here. This is Ducey from the future. And I just wanted to point out a couple things I missed my first time through. 
on the measurement tool, if I click and drag to make that, if I click again from the end point and drag, it will combine these tools. And of course you can always turn off your snap to grid. So now we've got a complete measurement path there as if it's one long measurement, which is fantastic. I'll select this, click on one of these and right click to delete or again, press and hold on iOS. And also, let me go to the token layer here. When you are moving, you can move with the shortest path between waypoints or real time path based on movement here. And what this means is freeform is what we're all used to. If I drag again, I'm in the middle of combat. That's why it shows this. Now, if I change this later, it just is going the shortest path. But if I have this changed to waypoint, now each time I move it, it will create a waypoint based on wherever I drag this guy do, 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 and measure the entire distance. I can also right click and reset the path. If I say, no, 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 that's all messed up. Reset. And if I'm in free form, let's say I move from here to here, I can also press and hold or right click and set a waypoint by going to path waypoint. And now I have set a waypoint there that will remember that I've moved there first. So those are super helpful when trying to calculate precise movement. Back to pass Ducey. Now this is one of my favorite new additions because I use this tabletop mode all the time. I want you to imagine that you've got a TV placed down into the table and you're you know maybe placing minis on top of that TV. Well what you can do is if you're you know on an iOS device you could broadcast that screen to an Apple TV, plug it in via HDMI or here on a Mac I've just opened up the second window that could be taken over to a second screen. But what's new is this tabletop mode, where if I turn on tabletop mode, it now will automatically set this to have a one inch grid so I can place minis on the TV. Now the key to doing this correctly is just putting in the uh, width of the TV right down here. And whatever size your TV is, let's say I was just playing on a, a little smaller one, 32 inch here, and then hit done. Now, when I go in and out of tabletop mode here, these would be correctly sized to be one inch on a TV that was that size. Now, the next thing that's really handy here is that you can turn the viewport on and off. And what that does is it will let you see from your screen exactly what is getting shown on the other screen now. So that makes it much easier to show and understand what your players are seeing, even if you're not able to have a great view of the screen. You know, sometimes if I have a DM screen up or something like that, I might not be able to see exactly what's on the TV in front of me. And you'll notice when I'm zooming out, I'm option scrolling, or you can two finger scroll on a trackpad or just pinch and zoom on a trackpad or on your iOS device, you'll see that because I'm in tabletop mode, it is not changing the size of those squares no matter what. And this was an addition in a later one, but I'm gonna to jump to it because it's important. I've got a little shortcut to lock this. So now, even as I'm moving stuff around, it is not moving the viewport at all for my players. Very handy with minis, because otherwise one little motion and sometimes all the minis are out of place. Now, whether you're using an external TV or not, or even if you're playing online, where people control their own view, there's a couple of new camera options. So if I right click over here and I do camera move, you'll see that the player view zips over there so that they can see what's in that section. And if I right click and I do camera point, it will show them a point of interest, but then return back to its original place. And that works on the web client as well. Very handy for pointing out certain areas on the map where you want to focus everybody's attention. You can also double click to do a real quick point or double tap on your iOS device. Speaking of maps, if you've ever built out a map using like uh, the DM version and then you went to go replace it with the player version, you'll know sometimes those are differently sized, even though it's the same image, they're different resolutions. So that can really cause some issues if you're dropping in, you know, a similar map that's a different size. Now you can come to tools here and do map resize, type in the size of the new image that you're dropping into here, and all of your 
walls and assets and tokens and everything that's placed down here will be shifted to go to the correct location even if the map that you're replacing it with is a different size now. So that is a super handy tool and don't forget to note the uh, maximum map size down here. Cool. This next one is uh, super simple, but really handy. You, you can now do division and multiplication right in here. So if I did 2d8 times 2, there we go. Ooh, what a bad roll. <laughs> or I could do, let's clear this, uh, d100 divided by 2. And there we go. And let's just close that. Another map tool, if you press and hold on iOS or on the Mac here, I'm gonna right click. I now have an unpresent option. So now that will turn the map off right from here the same way you can present it quickly. So while you can still do it from the uh, external screen menu up here, choosing what you're presenting and what you're not, this is a quick shortcut way to turn those on and off. On iOS, another little change there that's important to note here is if you do a long press on a map, you will get this quote unquote right click menu on iOS. And that changed from the double tap, which is now used, whoops, which is now used for that pointing tool. But if you want to change what that double click does, you now have a bunch of options down here under battle map for what does your default double tap action do? Point, move, or do the camera point? Your scroll, does it pan or zoom when you're using a touchpad. When you're using a mouse, does it zoom or pan? And those pathfinding options we looked at earlier, you can turn those on and off, whether or not you want it to show that path or use the more advanced pathfinding. And of course, we've got this low power mode that is both handy for older devices to run faster and to save some battery. It'll change a variety of options to just make things a little bit easier to run. Now, when we have tokens or objects here that have vision enabled, when we right click them or bring up the context menu with a tap and hold, there's a quick option to disable their light right there so you can turn that on and off. If I make a new light here, same, we can disable and enable that light quickly from the context menu now. And it gives us a little preview of how big that light source is. Of course, you can edit it just like always, change your radius for that. Cool. And now for our very last update, if you are looking at an image, like maybe you want to present one of these images, you can now hit these three dots up here, turn this image into a map right away. Obviously it doesn't make sense for this image, <laughs> but that can be really handy if you have uh, brought in some files that have maps in here as pages or little previews. You can just very quickly turn any of these things that are normally just an image directly into a map. Handy. Well, my friends, that is all the updates that we are looking at today. I plan on continuing to catch up uh, over the past six months that, uh, I've gotten a little bit behind on these. There's so many more cool updates. It's been super fun and exciting to use Encounter Plus with all of these new changes. Hopefully, I'll be able to crank one of those other videos out soon, but either way, I will see you in the next video. Have fun slaying some dragons. Bye.